morning, everybody. Morning. Welcome to First Christian Church. Uh, the reading I had came from uh, Romans 8, 28. It's man, the little article says, man and God. Remember that God sees the whole picture. He sees all the past. He sees all the present. And he has the power to see all the future. He can see from the beginning to the end. And he knows the destiny of every person and the solution to every problem. He loves us and he always and he's always available to us. But he will never force himself or his will upon us. As long as we live, we are allowed to choose. He is concerned about our true welfare and our happiness here and the hereafter. <clears throat> With him on our side, everything will turn out well. Let's go to prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in these unsettled times, we rely on you. I pray that those that are leaving this country look to you for guidance. <clears throat> As Joshua did when he was taking over the land of Canaan. And that all our prayers would include peace and prosperity for this America. I pray that those who are leading us use good judgment and make good decisions. So we ask that you help them do that. We also, Father, have sick in the congregation, and I pray that you tend to them to their needs so they may get back to their everyday living. I also ask that the Holy Spirit is with Rick and other pastors who feel the the pulpits and preach the word of God. I pray that they only teach the word from the Bible. Mostly all, <clears throat> mostly God, I, I pray that <clears throat> that we thank you for giving us Jesus who, who came to be the sacrifice for us on the cross. I pray that we work every day to do his commandment, to love our neighbors and try to help others to Christ. I ask forgiveness of our sins, and I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now Larry will come and lead us in singing. I invite you to take your hymnals, turn to hymn number 585. 585, let's stand together and sing, Brethren, we have met to worship. <laughs>
42. Turn the page to 543. There's a little bit of an interlude there, but we'll come right into that.
planning on being there, aren't you? It's good to have everyone in the house of the Lord today. Uh, this is the day that he has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're so happy to see everyone here. Those that are worshiping with us uh, via Facebook today, we uh, welcome you. And uh, we're just going to have a great time in the Lord together this morning. Um, out on the communion tables, out in the uh, narthex, uh, there is a little card, a phone directory update. Uh, Lisa, our secretary, is trying to update uh, birthdays, anniversaries, and uh, phone numbers, addresses. And uh, so if you think we may not have your uh, correct information, uh, if you would pick up one of those, fill it out, and drop it um, back on the table, uh, we'll get those and, and uh, we'll try our best to get everything updated. Also, next Sunday is Daylight Saving Time. Yep, here again. And uh, while we enjoy a little bit more of daylight at the, uh, in the afternoon, Oh, man, we lose an hour of sleep. So next Saturday, before you go to bed, run those clocks up an hour, and uh, that way everybody will be able to gather at the correct time on Sunday morning for worship. Um, I, I hate to admit this, but I, before we go to prayer... Um, I don't know how many of you are aware that gas prices are rising. <laughs> and uh, yesterday, uh, the place that I normally get gas, because it's normally the cheapest in town, it was three sixty nine. And uh, so we had to go pick up our grandson, and we went by Casey's, and I noticed it was three nineteen. So I told Becky, I said, we need to go ahead and fill the car up because it's probably going to go up too. So we dropped him off at the school, stopped at Casey's, and uh, I got out and started uh, getting gas. And about halfway through, I noticed that I had got the premium, <laughs> which was $384. <laughs> so in trying to save, I spent what, 19 cents more a gallon. And uh, so anyway, uh, I, I really hated to tell that. But uh, be careful when you pull up to those pumps. Uh, make sure you get the right nozzle. Uh, fortunately, it only took four gallons to fill the car. So that wasn't too bad. But uh, anyway, just to let you know your, your pastor, in case you were wondering, uh, your pastor is human. Uh, we want to go before the Lord in prayer today. Um, Johnny Rudisel, which is Sandra Shackelford's brother-in-law, uh, he had a heart procedure. They put in a stent uh, yesterday or day before, and that went well. But uh, they are going to have to go in and put two more in, and that is scheduled for Tuesday. So we want to continue to remember him in prayer. Danette House was able to come home from Springfield yesterday. We are thankful for that. And uh, yesterday I was contacted by two different individuals. Um, and if you ever wonder what impact maybe our live stream is having, uh, both of these individuals uh, their connection to the church, they do not physically attend, but uh, they are with us on Sundays uh, via our live stream. And uh, so I was in contact, uh, they contacted me yesterday, and uh, both of them with uh, prayer needs uh, that they did not want to make public, but asked that we would remember that need in prayer and uh, so I wanted to honor that. And uh, so we want to pray uh, for these needs 
that God would uh, be with them and that God would minister to them. Uh, also, all of those that are still on our prayer list, we want to be uh, cognizant of them in our prayer time, lifting them up before the Lord. And if you have a need today, if you would acknowledge it by an uplifted hand, we'll take our cares to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to come into your house, to have an audience with your presence. Lord, where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are in their midst. And so, Lord, we have the assurance today that you are here. And Father, you invite us to bring all of our needs and our cares, to cast them upon you because you care for us. Lord, today there are needs that are outside of our resources to be able to take care of. But Lord, your mercies are new every morning. And Lord, there is no end to what you can do. Nothing is impossible with you. And so Lord, today we bring all of our needs and we place them in front of you, asking Lord that you would minister healing, comfort, peace. Lord, that you would uh, be an encouragement to all. And Father, today I echo uh, the prayer of David that you would be with all of your people wherever they may be gathered today, that your presence would be among them. And Lord, that as your word is ministered, that we would find hope and life and light. Father, I pray that you would be with us throughout the remainder of this service, that you would help me today to be able to minister the things that you have placed in my heart to share. Father, we just give you all the glory. Be with all of those that aren't with us today. I pray your uh, hand over them, your watch care. And Father, we'll give you the praise for it all. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. And everybody said amen. amen. We're going to dismiss our kids to sunshine kids this morning. Miss Kelly will have something fun and special for you. Uh, I'm not singing today. <clears throat> My mom is not here. We uh, safely delivered her uh, back to Arkansas on Friday. And uh, we're thankful for a safe trip. It was an interesting trip coming back. Uh, several times we had uh, vehicles that were uh, quickly stopping in front of us. And then uh, as we came through uh, Hardy, we uh, ran through a herd of deer, and uh, so it was an interesting trip back, but the Lord kept his hand upon us. Um, I delivered my mom into the hands of my sister, and my sister contacted me this morning and said that mom was not feeling well. And uh, I was afraid that that would happen when she got with my sister. <laughs> uh, that's not really what it is. Uh, Mom hasn't felt well for about a week and a half, but she got up this morning pretty weak and, and uh, unsteady. And uh, so if you would, uh, even though she's not uh, still with us, just keep her uh, in your prayer time. Um, Edward touched on it back in January uh, when he was the elder that uh, was opening the service. Uh, and what he shared uh, began to speak to my heart. And uh, about, I don't know, two or three days after that, I uh, happened upon an article that uh, really uh, stirred me. And uh, then Darren mentioned it last week. And then David again mentioned it in his prayer today about loving our neighbor. And uh, I want you to go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 25. And I'm only going to read one verse of scripture. 
Matthew 25, verse 45. Jesus is speaking and says, Then he will answer them, saying, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. I want to share with you the thought this morning of look again. Look again. How many have seen this picture before? I used it as the impetus for a vision message on the first Sunday of 2020. And after that message, we had it framed and it has been hanging in the stairwell entrance ever since. In that message, I challenged us to be a church that reflects Jesus by loving him and loving one another. And how that love is expected to overflow and how we love and treat others that are outside the body of Christ. At the time that I preached that message, little did I know that two and a half months later our church doors would be closed due to COVID-19. Because of safety precautions that were put into place, in-person worship was suspended. And what we originally thought would be short-term turned into 14 months of separation. For 14 months, we ministered the best we could using technology such as Zoom and Facebook. And then in May of 2020, we partially reopened in-person worship by going to two services to be able to accommodate what became known as social distancing. And then after a few months of that, we went back to one service trying to still be careful. And since that time, we have tried to find our equilibrium as we've navigated through the various variants of COVID that have come along. It has been a real challenging season for pastors and church leaders. And I have to tell you that I've been very encouraged the last couple of weeks as more of us are gathering in person to worship. Two long years have passed, and once again I am hopeful that things can return to some semblance of normal in our present state of life. Notwithstanding the war in Ukraine and unrest around the world is having a profound effect on all of us. There's a lot of uncertainty as to whether Russia is going to stop with Ukraine or if they are going to venture into other areas. A lot of eyes are on China. Whether or not they will use this moment to move against Taiwan. A lot of things going on in our world. World markets are being disrupted. Lives are being displaced. Families are being separated and humanitarian aid is being overwhelmed. It's not lost on me this morning that many things have changed, are changing, and that difficult circumstances remain. But it is in this moment that we have opportunity to be the salt and the light that Jesus empowers us to be through the help of the Holy Spirit. 
I believe that the Lord's church is going to experience another great awakening before the Lord's return. It has always and continues to be the only place of true hope in a chaotic world. But this revival, this awakening, I believe, is going to be predicated on our commitment to see others as Jesus sees them. Her name was Marinella Beretta. She lived in Pristino, a picturesque tourist town near Lake Como in northern Italy. The area is home to a population of just over 84,000 people. 84,000. I want you to get that number in your mind. 84,000 people. During a storm where high winds threatened to uproot some neglected trees in her garden, the police made a call to her home. There they found the mummified remains of the 70-year-old woman. She was sitting in a chair at her kitchen table where she had died. It was determined that she had been dead for over two years after neighbors said that they had not seen her since September of 2019. The front page of Italy's largest daily paper called her loneliness personified. The editorialist lamented that people die alone and we live alone, which is almost worse. But the paragraph that has stayed with me for the past few weeks read this way. The mystery of Marinella's invisible life behind the closed gate of her cottage teaches us a terrible lesson. The real sadness is not what others, is not that others did not notice her death. It's that they did not realize Marinella Beretta was alive. When I read that, I had to ask myself, am I aware of my neighbor? Am I conscious of what is happening in my neighborhood and how I can be of help? Do I even know the names of my neighbors? The verse of Scripture that I read at the beginning of the message today is just one verse of a lengthy narrative that seemed to be of importance to the Lord. In that discourse, Jesus distinguishes between the righteous and the unrighteous and how at the Lord's return, not everyone gets to be on the same side of the fence. Not everyone will be saved. The righteous will be separated from the unrighteous. It's the story of the separating of the sheep from the goats. But what's interesting to me is how he defines the righteous. Because he doesn't make it about doctrine even though doctrine is important and it's the bedrock of our foundation in following Jesus. 
The Lord never mentions baptism. Even though baptism is important. He even leaves out the part about church attendance, tithing. He fails to mention how many times we took communion. Even though all of those things are important. He simplified it so that even a child could understand it. He said, I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was a stranger. I, I was naked. I was sick. I was in prison. And you saw me. And you either tended to my need or you chose to look the other way. And then the reaction comes from those that were listening. And they ask, when did we see you under these circumstances? And with one sentence, Jesus brings all the chickens home to roost. Inasmuch as you did not do it to the least, you did not do it unto me. For two years, we have watched people's lives change. The pandemic, I fear, has cost us something much more than empty shelves at the grocery store. Or rising inflation that lessens our buying power. It has caused many to become isolated and alone. They live in their own little world. Their own little cocoon. Fearful of venturing out. And yet close to refuse others to come in. The, Wa the uh, Wason's granddaughter captured the epitome <clears throat> of homelessness in this piece of art. But this picture represents every man, woman, boy, and girl that does not walk or live in relationship with Jesus Christ. We see them everywhere. Some live on the streets. Others live in the nicest houses in town. And they must not be overlooked. And they must not be forgotten. We must determine to look again and keep our eyes and our hearts open for opportunities to minister to them. What if? What if? We, we do everything we can and and, and thank you for your financial support of First Christian Church. Allows us to keep the lights on, the building presentable. Offering a place for us to come and worship. We believe that gathering together is valuable. Being in worship together <clears throat> encourages us. It encourages me. The body of Christ is stronger when we're together. I, I'm thankful for the opportunities that we have to be able to broadcast our service. It plays an important role for those that cannot be here. 
And I'm thankful for all of that. I'm thankful for the patience, the encouragement, and the flexibility that we've had throughout this pandemic to be able to do what we've done, to try to keep us connected. All of the things that we do are needed and they're important. But what if? What if at the end of the day, the only thing that we are judged on is how we loved God and how we loved our neighbor? A lawyer asked Jesus, what are the two greatest commandments? And the Lord said, to love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That sets the bar pretty high. To love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength. To make sure that He is at the forefront, that He is the number one priority. That everything in our lives centers around worship and glorifying God, not only in our praise, but in our actions. And then to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. I know there are some people, they have a difficult time in loving themselves. Life hasn't been so kind. It's been one challenge after another. and Due to circumstances, their self-worth is not where it needs to be. And because they don't love themselves, they have a difficult time loving others. I understand that, and I think God understands that. But I can't answer for those people. I can only look in the mirror at myself. And when I look at myself, I see someone, and it's not ego, it's just that I love me. You can look at me and tell I love me. I feed me. That's how much I love me. I don't miss an opportunity to eat. I, I try to dress me well because I love me. I, I try to provide for my needs because I love me. And I can tell by looking at you that you love you. The question is, do I love my neighbor the way I love me? Because that is the bar that Jesus has set. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. I want us, the congregation of First Christian Church, I want every one of us to be among the righteous. I want every one of us to hear Jesus say one day, well done, my good and faithful servant. And so I come to you again 
and ask us to make it our purpose to see the least and to minister to them. To look again. Because as we do it unto others, we do it unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us that in good times we are to love you and to love others, but perhaps even more so in difficult times under extreme circumstances. We are to have a heart that looks to others and to offer help in their time of need. I thank you for this church. Lord, I thank you that throughout this pandemic, you have kept your hand on us. I thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us during that time. I, I am just so thankful, Lord, for what you have done for us. And Lord, those blessings that we have received are blessings that are owed. And so I pray, Lord, that you would help us open up avenues by which we can do unto you by doing unto the least. Help us, Lord. Help me to lead this congregation. Help me, Lord, to lead by example. Help us, Lord, to start loving others like we love ourselves. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Today is the first Sunday of Lent, a period of time that leads us to Holy Week, the crucifixion of our Savior, and then the celebration of His resurrection on Easter Sunday. Some people use the season of Lent to give up something as a discipline to spend more time in prayer or perhaps uh, personal reflection. And uh, if, if you choose to do that, uh, I commend you for that. I also think that it is a season for us to be aware of opportunities, to bring a little joy to others. And, and it really doesn't have to be something that is spectacular. It can be something very simple. Friday morning, uh, on the way out of town, my, my mom likes donuts. And so I had told her that on the way out of town, we would go by the donut shop and... and get some donuts to eat on our way down. And uh, when we got there, uh, it was like a traffic jam. Uh, people trying to go through the drive through And, and uh, so I had to park on the street, and I went in, and, and uh, the line was down to the right and down the wall. And so I got in line and was waiting. And as I was waiting, others came in and I noticed that there was a, a young man and he had a, a baby carrier and he also had this little girl. I don't know, she was probably two or three. And she was dressed in this little princess outfit. And, uh, and so she's there and there are about, oh, three or four people behind me. And uh, while I was waiting, I could hear the conversation he was having with the little girl about her wanting a pink donut. And uh, other people were ordering, and uh, I heard him say, they make it all of the pink donuts. And so she just kept holding her dad's hand, looking at what was disappearing out of the case. And so it came my time uh, to order, and so 
I ordered what we were gonna gonna eat, and I turned to that little girl and I said, "Do you want a pink donut?" And she said, "Yes." And I said, "If you'll come up here and show this lady which one you want, I'll buy it for you to make sure that nobody behind me buys it." So she came up and she pointed to the one she wanted. The lady wrapped it up and gave it to her. She just had this huge smile on her face. And you know what? Not only was she smiling, but everybody in that line was smiling. Over a pink donut. Such a little thing. But sometimes it's a little thing that can bring great joy. Communion allows us to first see Jesus and then be able to see through his eyes. To see his love, his mercy, his compassion, his help, and his hope. His life, an open book through Scripture that shows us how he met people at the point of their need and brought joy to their lives. Today, as we gather at the table of the Lord, I encourage us to see Jesus for who He is. A Savior willing to lay down His life so that we might all have the hope of eternal life with Him. On the night that He was betrayed, as He sat with His disciples at supper, He took the bread blessed it, broke it, gave it to them and said, take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. And likewise he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink all of it, this is the blood of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's bow our hearts in prayer. Gracious Father, I thank you today for the example that you give to us. I thank you for the opportunity to come to your table Lord, to be reminded that our hope came with a price, a price that you so willingly paid that man could be reconciled to you. Father, today we thank you for that. For it's in this moment that we're reminded that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, in communion we see that greater love hath no man than one that is willing to lay down his life for another. Lord Jesus, today, I pray as we're reminded of your compassion, Lord, that we leave here understanding our purpose as your disciples. That, Lord, the mantle has now fallen to us to be your hands. Lord, to reach out to those in need. To be your feet to go to where there are opportunities for us to share the beautiful gospel of hope. Lord, I pray for us as a congregation. Lord, that you would lead us, that you would guide us. 
and that you would help us to be a blessing to our community. And Lord, as individuals, that you would help us to be a blessing to our neighbor. Father, I ask these things in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Larry's going to come and lead us in our closing hymn today. I invite you all to get your hymnal. Let's stand together and sing. Let's turn to number 513. Number 513. Mm -hmm. As he has loved us, let us go forth and love others. Amen? Amen. Again, we are so thankful for you being here today. I pray that as this week unfolds, that the Lord would bless you, that he would allow his face to shine upon you and give you peace. As we're dismissed today, let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.